Ah. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Today I'm planning on jumping in the lake for you, for science. It's because lately there's been a lot of talk about ferro rods and how you should have one in case you accidentally fall in the water or something. And they say your butane lighter won't work. But I've never heard anyone over the years, kind of discussions like this have been going on. I can't remember ever hearing anyone saying they accidentally fell in the river and the ferro rod saved them. I can't remember anyone saying that uh, they jumped in the water on purpose or tested it out in any way. So I feel a little bit like a weirdo because I got a bunch of lighters in my pockets and in my packs in different areas. Some of them in containers, other ones just the lighter in the pocket in different ways. And planning on jumping in, splash around, submerge myself, submerge the pack. One insult to a good pack, you know. <laughs> and then test it out. And you know, also I have uh, flint and steel. How's that ever going to hold up? Well, maybe it will. Maybe I'll be able to make fire with flint and steel after uh, accidentally on purpose uh, going in the drink. So I'm trying to set up the shot. This is what sawgrass does to me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> be careful about that. Here I am, good as new. I like to use electrical tape. Not recommending it for other people. Not recommending it because it's not medical certified. I've never checked, but how could it be? <laughs> it's not sterile, whatever. But uh, I just like it because uh, I don't have to be putting pressure on it right now because the electrical tape is stretchy and it's putting the right amount of pressure. So maybe it's foolish. That's what I've done for a long time. And another thing you shouldn't do medically is uh, get it wet. That was pretty deep. There's blood on the grass, <laughs> blood on my pack. I guess I shouldn't laugh about it, but you get a decent cut. You don't want to uh, get it wet, but it's for you guys. Anything for you. Okay, jump in the lake. Ah! That's actually kind of buoyant. I had to force myself under. Okay. And he swims to shore. Okay, I'm taking my pack off. Take the lighter out. It's a piezo lighter. Breast pocket. It's an old rusty one. That one's V light. What about this one? Scripto. <laughs> Still another. <laughs> Maybe the extended tip isn't helping it. Still nothing. Here's my flint and steel tents in my cargo pocket. Now this one in a cargo pocket. I don't know, I just did that. See if the, uh, just a bubble wrap helps it at all. Oh, so that's cardboard on one side. And it helped it. I was splashing around there pretty good. Went in twice. I didn't swim from a mile out in the lake. But this little cover like that. Here's another scripto cargo pocket.
So there's something to it, right? If you drown your lighter. I was thinking I might do this real time, but... Oh, I saw a spark. Yeah, I see any sparks. I smell a lot of butane. I don't want to blow my head off. That probably wouldn't happen. Huh? A little bit cold. And I just injured my hand. <laughs> that really was an accident. I promise I didn't cut myself on purpose. Just the grass cut me. Seeing sparks. <laughs> this technique's worked for me before. At least I thought it did. Maybe it was just drying out over time. Friction wheel. Try shaking it. It's weird. I can see a spark and nothing's happening. Well, this is a new lighter. I didn't test it. Just jamming all kinds of lighters in my pockets. Took it out of the bubble wrap. There we go. My goodness. See if it does it again. <laughs> so it's still kind of wet. There we go. So, it's going to drown your lighter, cause you problems, but it's temporary. And uh, even the bubble wrap helped. You know, that one in the bubble wrap. Crypto Mega Lighter, yeah. And it doesn't have the friction wheel, it's a piezo. Yeah. Works well. Wonder how stuff made out my pack. Take a look. Ah, there's a... Jumping in the lake. There's uh... Oh no, no wonder it was buoyant. And I jumped in with all my gear, just uh not my camera gear, I mean all my bushcraft, camp and stuff. Notice my method here, I got a D-ring and got my spoon. I don't want to lose my survival spoon and my big fat ferro rod. I put it in the pocket. Alright. Next. Let's see what we got in here. Well, got more flint and steel stuff. But in here, we got a little poncho. Bandana. I saw the poncho. 
Oh, and I real, realize this isn't traditional mountain man <laughs> or colonial technology, whatever. But that's what I did, guys. It's like a bird's nest in there. Got some jute twine. My tin. Tin looks pretty dry. So I'm thinking, you know, if I still have my pack. Be all set with that, but I'll test that later. But this tin, like I said, was just in a cargo pocket. Not any plastic or anything. Went in the drink. Let's see what else we got. So this little container, you get three for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. And it says snack containers with lid. So it's not even like a dry bag. Oh, oh we got a plane. Red candy. I had a friend claim briefly. any better. No, nope, you can drown a bit. Okay. Cat treats for the Dollar Tree. I don't know, I'm obsessed with the Dollar Tree. Oh! <laughs> nope. Don't try to save your lighter in a container of Dollar Tree cat treats. How about this prescription bottle container? Huh? That make a good dry bag, dry container, whatever. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, so doing this for you for science. Tried it out, and again, I didn't swim halfway across the ocean, but you know, I dunked myself twice, and uh, there, there was <laughs> like two quarts of water in my pack. Initially, it was. Uh, buoyant but then uh, it was taken on water so that's the thing maybe I'd have to jettison it because it would become an anchor I don't know but uh, prescription bottle uh, keep some dry so we did the experiment with the lighters you can drown them it takes a while to dry them out before they work again not a huge deal but something to consider what about a ferro rod I just pulled this out of my pack Got the striker, or at least what I use as a striker. It's a jigsaw blade. I carry that because the jigsaw blade has other possible uses. So let's see. Gobs of sparks. So no difference at all. Getting it wet, so that is an advantage. Also, I can take the big fat ferro rod and I got a 90 degree spine. I can scrape off ferrocerium fragments into my tinder and then when I hit that, the sparks hit the fragments, those ignite and they got really intense flame. There you go. So, there is an advantage. Here's the tin for flint and steel that I had in my pack. In a freezer bag. A sandwich bag, something like that. Look at my bird's nest. That's dry. I have uh, punk wood, charred punk wood, and also charred horse hoof fungus fragments. And that's bone dry. So, why even bother with that? I mean, just, let's say flint and steel is more susceptible to water, but got a sandwich bag. So, I'll, I'll try the one uh, little tin that I just had in my cargo pocket, my pants. That got drowned. Let's see how that does. Flint and steel fire with stuff I just had in my pockets. No plastic bag, nothing like that. No dry bag. Do have some stuff in a tin. Haven't opened it yet. It's going to be standing water.
I have an issue opening it. Of course, I'm a little bit cold and I just <laughs> chopped my finger off. <laughs> wow. There is a little bit of dampness. Yep. Had this tinder bundle. My miniature bird's nest, a hummingbird's nest, a lot of times I make out of uh, jute twine. It's a little bit damp. Got too much wind. Could go hide in a more sheltered place. I'll try to do it right here. Probably foolish. Okay, I got the very bottom. Char cloth on the bottom, punk wood on the top. Which do we try first? Try the punk wood first. Okay. Got embers. I should snuff that, but I don't want to set my. Uh... Yeah. There you go, buck guys. Okay, I'm not going to make a whole campfire, but uh, they are. Uh... So, tin, tin in the pocket, jump in the lake, can still start flint and steel. If you got a tin, and that kind of tin, maybe one with hinges, water would have got in, but uh, we're smart, right? <laughs> Alright, how about chocolate? Chalk off those in the bottom. Too much wind. First strike. There's your ember. Not gonna make a fire, guys. I mean, you know. So, in all craziness, I mean, we did the experiment. This is science. Science. Okay, we did the science and. Uh, at least this time, maybe a more extreme circumstance. Went in the lake, not on purpose. Had to swim a long distance. Maybe the results are different, but this time, when we could do it, even had <laughs> the injured hand. Think about that. My friend the raven's coming. I'm gonna say hi to him, spend a little time with my buddy. So I'll let you go for now, but I'm working hard, guys, making videos. And I'll be back soon. See you then. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Psalm 41, 1.